ready to unlock some next level self-management skills. Uh, and I'm not talking about some magic willpower potion or anything. We're diving into some serious behavioral science today, folks. Straight from, let me see, chapter 29 of this Applied Behavior Analysis textbook I've got here. Get ready to see your habits in a whole new light. You know, it's so easy to think we've just got to dig deep down inside, find that motivation, you know, willpower, all that jazz. But what if I told you the real secret sauce is actually understanding what's going on outside ourselves, those external forces that shape our actions? Okay, yeah, like why do some people just cruise through their to-do lists while others, <laughs> at me, struggle not to devour everything in the pantry? Mm -hmm. We often blame it on ourselves, right? They're just disciplined. I'm just lazy. But does that actually help us change? Mm, not really. Nope. And get this, this textbook actually quotes B.F. Skinner on the point. We tend to say, uh, if one thing follows another, it was probably caused by it. Like we're always looking for some internal cause. But sometimes it's really our environment subtly, you know, influencing those choices we make. So instead of beating myself up for not being a morning person, maybe I need to switch up my evening routine or or swap out the overflowing snack door for a bowl of fruit. Is that kind of what we're getting at here? Bingo. It's not about judging ourselves. It's about really understanding how our environment shapes our actions and then using that knowledge to actually, you know, make real lasting changes. Okay. See, now that already feels a lot more hopeful than just trying to willpower my way to being a different person. Yeah. But before we get to the how-to, let's break down what self-management actually is. Because it's not just about, like, being born organized, is it? Definitely not. This textbook makes a really important distinction. Self-management is a skill set. Anyone can learn these skills and actually master them. It's about recognizing that, you know, sometimes we're just managing small habits and other times we're designing whole systems for success. Oh, I love that. Designing systems for success. It's less about my inability to resist that second cookie and more about like building a system that feels way more doable. Right. And a key part of that is understanding the difference between self-control, that's more about like delaying gratification in the moment, and self-management, which is about, well, managing the entire game. So less about white knuckling it through every temptation, more about strategizing, setting ourselves up for success. Exactly. Think of Odysseus and the Sirens. I mean, he knew he couldn't resist their song with willpower alone, mm. right? So he told his crew to tie him to the mast, put wax in their ears, he literally changed his environment to change the outcome. That's what we're talking about here. Okay, now that example is sticking with me. It's way more actionable than just trying to be better. But how does that translate to like everyday life? What can someone actually hope to achieve with these self-management skills? So it's not just about resisting that tempting donut. It's about like changing the game entirely, right. right? We're looking at all those factors around us, those external forces that influence our choices. And then, well, we can try to use those to make those better choices a little bit easier. Exactly. And the best part is this isn't just some abstract theory, you know? This textbook lays out some really practical tactics, stuff that anyone can start using like today. Less talk, more action. I like it. What do we got? Well, let's start with what are called antecedent-based tactics. Sounds kind of complicated, but it really just means changing things up before that target behavior even has a chance to rear its ugly head. So setting yourself up for success instead of like waiting until you're already surrounded by temptation. Exactly. It's about being proactive. Like the book talks about this one study where people who were trying to stop snacking late at night put a picture, well, <laughs> a picture of someone who was not exactly their uh, weight loss goal on the fridge. Kind of funny image, but hey, it worked. <laughs> okay, that's hilarious and maybe a little bit brutal, but <laughs> I get it. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Or unappealing visual as a deterrent. What about some other, you know, less shocking tactics? Oh, there are plenty. One thing they talk about is using what are called response prompts. Think like strategically placed sticky notes, phone reminders, anything that kind of nudges you in the right direction, you know. It's like you're creating this like self-management support system all around you. I like it. And speaking of systems, didn't the book also talk about designating a specific environment for the behavior you want to do more of? Like if you're a writer, you have a writing room, and in that room, the only rule is to write. What's the thinking behind that? It's all about building up those strong associations in your mind. So that specific room, all those little cues in that environment, they become mentally linked to that desired behavior. That way, when you walk into that space, boom, your brain knows it's go time. It's like stepping onto a stage, mm. right? Your brain knows it's showtime. Mm. All right, so we're setting the stage for success with all these like preemptive strikes against our bad habits. What's next? 
This next one is really interesting, self-monitoring. It's way more powerful than most people realize. You mean like tracking your habits? I've tried that, but I'll be honest, I'm not always the best at keeping up with it. That's totally fine. Because here's the thing, even if your self-monitoring isn't like perfect, it can still make a difference. Remember Liza and Stu from the book? Those students who were tracking their behavior in class. Oh, right, right. Even though Liza wasn't totally accurate with her tracking, her study habits still got better. I remember thinking that was so wild. It is, and it could be because just the act of observing our actions makes us more conscious of them. You yeah. know, it's like we suddenly become aware of those patterns we've been trying to change. So even if we aren't sitting there analyzing our every move, just the act of tracking things can be enough to create some change. Sometimes, yeah. Okay, now let's talk about self-administered consequences. This is about holding yourself accountable. Ooh, okay, things are about to get real. The book had that example of the person who would tear up a dollar every time they smoked a cigarette. That's some serious commitment. It definitely makes you think twice, right? <laughs> but it doesn't have to be that intense. In fact, the book actually cautions against making those rewards or punishments too big. Yeah, because punishing yourself into submission doesn't really sound sustainable. What was that thing they said about bootleg reinforcement? Ah, uh, yes. That's when you reward yourself even though you haven't really earned it. Like if you're trying to cut back on sugar, but then you have a big piece of cake because, well, I deserve it. You're just messing with your brain at that point. Oh, tell me about it. I know that trap well. <laughs> so we have to be deliberate right. and consistent with those consequences. Exactly. And if you're really struggling, that's where a self-management partner can be a game changer. Like a really good friend who can help keep you accountable, maybe even administer those consequences if you need that extra push. Ah, so you're not not in this battle alone. It's like having a teammate for your self-improvement journey. I like that. Someone to high-five your wins and keep it real with you. Okay, so now that we've got these tactics, let's talk about how to actually weave them together into a, like an actual plan. Okay, this is where things go from theory to like practical magic. Really? Right, let's do it. What are those steps? Six steps. They lay it all out in six clear steps. Six steps to like self-management mastery. Okay, I'm ready. Lay them on me. So it all starts with a clear goal, right? Yeah. What's that one behavior you're really aiming to change? And I'm not talking about some vague idea like be healthier, but like a specific concrete action. Okay, so instead of be healthier, it's more like eat five servings of veggies a day. Specific <sighs> and measurable. Got it. What's next? Step two is self-monitoring. We were just talking about this, remember? It's like your feedback loop. It tells you what's working, what needs tweaking, all that. Right, and even if it's not perfect, the very act of tracking can spark change. Okay, so we're clear on the goal, we're tracking our progress, what's next? Now we get to the good stuff. Designing those competing contingencies. How can you make those those desired behaviors more attractive, you know? And the undesirable ones, well, a lot less so. Right, like swapping out that candy dish on the counter for like a bowl of fruit. Make those healthy choices the easy choices. So we're setting up our environment, tracking those habits, but like, what if you need an extra push? You know, that's where step four comes in public commitment. It's as simple as telling someone your goal. It adds a layer of accountability and you might even get some extra support along the way. Yeah. It's like having your own personal cheering section, right? Yeah. Someone to keep those motivation levels high. OK, that totally makes sense. And speaking of support systems, I'm guessing this is where having that self-management partner would come in handy. You know it. Having someone who can offer support, encouragement, maybe even help administer those consequences, it can make a huge difference. It's like having a built-in accountability buddy. All right, so we've got our goal, our tracking system, our environment's all set up. We've got our cheering section ready to go. What's that final and maybe most important step? This is the one a lot of people miss, but it's so key ongoing evaluation and redesign. See, self-management isn't something you just set and forget, you know? We gotta be flexible, look at the data we're collecting, and make changes as needed along the way. So it's not about being rigid, it's about being adaptable. If something's not working, switch it up, just like we would with a recipe or something, right? And, and over time, I guess we become more, what, like, skilled at managing our own behavior. Exactly, we're training our brains. You know, yeah. becoming more self-aware, more responsive. And here's the truly amazing part. Behavior changes behavior. Every time we succeed with these self-management techniques, it creates this, this positive feedback loop. It's like we're proving to ourselves that we can change, which just makes us more likely to stick with it, right? We build that confidence, that belief in our own ability to achieve our goals. 
It's amazing how, like, just a few tweaks to our actions can have such a huge impact on our lives. It really is. And it makes you think, if we can use these principles to change our own behavior, what about creating environments that support positive change for, you know, everyone? Whoa, now that's an incredible thought. Imagine classrooms, workplaces, even like whole communities designed to make those healthy choices the easy choices. That could be game changing. It all starts with understanding these core principles, the ones we've been diving into today. So to all of you out there on your own self-management journey, remember, you're not stuck with the willpower you've got. You have the tools, the knowledge, and the power to create change, both within yourself and the world around you. And hey, you never know, you might just inspire others to do the same. That's a wrap on our deep dive into the incredible world of self-management. We hope you've come away with some valuable tools and are feeling empowered to unlock your full potential. Until next time, happy learning, everyone.